As I was saying, the, the, the midterm is going to be next week. The date is the exact date would be uh, the 19th, October 19th. It's going to be uh, online, so it's going to be on your computer. So you're going to do the uh, quizzes on your, compu uh, your midterm on the computer, but it's uh, in person. So you have an hour and a half to do it. Um, it's on first five weeks of the semester, so week six is not in it. We don't do anything about it. We're not going to have any question about week six. Um, the type will be multiple choice for concept questions. Um, fill in the blank for walkthroughs. So, so the walkthrough is going to be given to you. I'm going to give you a walkthrough and say, what is the exact output of the following program that usually generates only one line of output? So you're going to enter that exactly as what it is. It has to be exact, the output of the, um, the walkthrough. And um, um, if it's two lines, then you're going to have two fields to put, line number one, line number two, and so on and so forth. Those are the walkthroughs. Uh, they are going to be short programming questions. Um, there, there could be code snippets, which I tell you um, add three elements to the end of this vector, something like that. So it's a very simple thing. Code snippets, small code and snippets to write. Um, and uh, uh, one whole function to write. Okay. So I'm not going to ask you to write a program like main and everything. If you are to write a comp if you are to write a complete code that works, it's going to be a function of a, of something. Maybe I'll give you a class and ask you add a feature to a class or something like that. Okay. Um, when you are submitting your codes, when you are submitting your codes. Uh, please make sure that you use the code section of, uh, of Blackboard, of the online uh, test that you are having. So you insert code in your, so it highlights it and everything is set and properly done. Uh, if, you, if I can't read your question, if your question is confusing and bad indentation and stuff like that, I will mark it. Easy. So you're responsible to put the code that is proper on, uh, uh, on your test. And I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you. Um, uh, I'm going to actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create what I call it, uh, um, what do I call it? Dry run test. So I'll create a dry run test for you so you can test on it and see what I mean. Um, uh, and in that dry run test, I'm going to make it to immediately show you the outcome, and you can take it many times to practice on it and see how you can, because you are doing it on a computer. You're allowed to use anything you want, whatever you want on a computer. You have an hour and a half to do, to do it, and that's it, okay? So um, um, if you choose to not to write the code directly in the thing and you want to do use Visual Studio, any kind of to coding thingy or whatever you have, to do it, uh, when you are copying and pasting, you have to make sure that the, what you are pasting is going to actually um, uh, be uh, readable. Um, one of the first signs of getting a copy from someone else is extra lines. So you cannot skip it. So what you do when you get the code from someone else and you copy and you put it, you will see that each, each line of code is going to look like this. As soon as I see something like this, I know what's going on. Okay? So when you are giving me a code, the code should be nicely organized and, and put properly. Um, I will show you, um, I'll demonstrate. <coughs> I will demonstrate. <coughs> All right. So say we go here. Uh, 
All right, so So this is how the dry run test works, okay? So you begin the test, and when you begin the test, I ask you to do something and a question to put something in there. And I'm explaining exactly how to, how to do it and how to insert code in it. So, so, when, so you have a preview, you can actually see how it's done. You can insert code. So if I want a code to be inserted in my program from Visual Studio, I copy the code. I'll go to insert code, I'll select C++, and I'll paste it, and I'm going to say save. So it's going to go like that in my code when I'm submitting it, okay? That's how you do it, okay? You cannot, if you leave it any way other than that, then I can't mark it because I need to be able to walk through it and 40 students, 35 students to walk through every single code, then I have to meet three weeks to mark your your test and that's not going to happen, right? So make sure you do that, please. Uh, that's that. So I'm going to actually put this dry run code for you so you can submit it. And as soon as you submit, it shows what is being submitted. So save and submit. Click OK. And it actually shows selected answer. This is your answer. So if you can read your own answer, that means I can do it too. Very simple. So. This dry run test that I'm going to put up for you, keep doing it until you see how it's a proper way of, uh, of uh, adding anything, okay? Um, <clears throat> so, uh, will we good with that? Any questions about midterm, if you want to? Anything? Pardon me? Debugging questions? Uh, so, um, Debugging questions, it's going to be two kinds. Either I'll, I'll ask you to do a walkthrough, that's debugging, or I'm going to give you a piece of code and say what's wrong with this. Okay? And you're going to tell, you can put it in a compiler, compile it and tell me what's wrong with it. And for that, I have instructions, which means um, when I give you a piece of code and tell you debug it, and you put it in Visual Studio and you see what the warnings are, if you copy and paste the warning from Visual Studio into the code, the mark for the whole thing is zero. You have to give me your interpretation of what that warning means. Okay? So you have to look at the warning. You see a line 23. It, it says, I don't know, uninitialized, whatever, whatever. So you, then you have to tell me that this variable was not initialized before uh, being used, and therefore it's going to cause possible crashes and so on and so forth, okay? So you have to explain to me what that is. Copying and pasting warnings of uh, error messages of uh, uh, compiler, any type of compiler is not acceptable, okay? I just need your, and because I have only one hour and a half, it's not like offline things that we gave you three tests. You have one hour for one, another hour for another. It's not like that, so the questions are much smaller, okay? We, I'm not going to give you ginormous questions that you have to spend three hours on it. Yes? We still have to with the type of error, like error You'll see the description of it, okay? Um, maybe I'm going to give you something that in the dry run test so you can see it too, okay? So to see what it is, um, and um, that's going to be it. Uh, any other question about the, oh yeah. To do what? Visual Studio can't do that. No, Visual Studio sucks for the, like, because it's on Windows, right? And Windows operating system sucks. Like, it's very forgiving because, you know, um, um, Things that you can get away with it on, the thing you say get away with it is, no, it's going to shoot you later in the foot. 
but we have tools like Valgrind on, on, so that's not a Linux thing. Valgrind is not part of Linux operating system. Somebody wrote it. Okay, so we have tools like that on Linux that we can actually pinpoint what it is. You can use Valgrind if you want to to, to, to test whatever, but you don't have too much time. Remember, you have only have one hour and a half, right? And I'm not going to give you cryptic um, answers, questions that goes bananas. Maybe one cryptic thing that if you don't answer, you get 95% instead of 100. Something like that, okay? Um, workshop 5, you know that the thing is not up because of uh, uh, the submission is not up. I didn't set up the submission. Um, so because of Thanksgiving, I'm shifting everything three days back. So the due date and everything is going to go shift at three days back, and I'll set that one up. When it comes up, you'll notice. And the same with workshop six, if it's done before. Uh, if workshop, if I don't think it's going to be released before the, uh, if workshop six is to be released before the study break, then I'm going to make the due date end of the study break, which means it's going to be uh, one whole week to do it. Uh, Anything else that you want to know about midterm? Uh, that's why I said due date is going to be end of the study break. So you're going to have ten, 10 days to do it. So you'll be fine. <laughs> if it is, because I'm not the leader of the thing, I have to take a look. I'm not sure if it's going to be actually uh, be released before the break or not. If it does, if it gets released before the break, you're going to get to do that at the end of your study break. So you have plenty of time to work on it and do it. Please uh, use the, uh, uh, the quizzes for your reviews before the break, which means study one week, do the quiz, study another week, do the quiz like that to kind of test yourself. Uh, are we okay? All right. Today's session is uh, pretty boring. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's essentially, I'm essentially going to tell you what C++ has. That's what it is. There's no trick behind it. I'm not going to teach you any new concept. I'm just going to tell you what tools are available in C++. Um, and uh, go through um, those facts, giving you some examples of the things that I have written so you can actually take home and uh, walk through it and see how it's written. So I implemented closely some of the things that are made. Uh, we are going to uh, explain uh, different types of uh, data structure linked lists and uh, arrays to understand how the parts of C++ work. You don't need to learn how to implement it. I'm giving you the implementation. The implementation of all these things are in data structure subject. If you take the data structure subject, that's where you're going to learn these things. In here, I'm just going to tell you briefly what it is. Probably draw some stuff over here to tell you how the linked lists work. And, um, uh, and we, uh, uh, we're going to end the session with that. So. Uh, for this week, what you need to do is practice. Um, what you need to do is to go home for every single uh, instance that you see. Write a short program for yourself, test it. Write, write a small tester program for features that you see to, to learn how they work. Um, <clears throat> so... <clears throat> Let me bring up. <laughs> so first time, first of all, standard library. What is the standard library of, of C++? Standard library of C++ is essentially what all the, uh, uh, let me just, bring actually the notes up for you and just show it to you so you know what I am talking about. So yeah, the standard libraries of, of C++, uh, uh, 
please go through all these things. These are, um, it's just telling you what are uh, all the functionalities and things that you have coming from C and uh, what is added to C++ after. Um, so uh, with exceptions and things like that, we're gonna, uh, we talked about it. We know what exceptions are. Um, uh, for the, mm, these are all, again, list of all the stuff. I cannot tell you, well, A2I is ASCII to integer, abort is to terminate, uh, 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 an application prematurely, at exit is to, to what to do when pro program exits. So these are the things that just uh, uh, for you uh, uh, to know um, how they work. Just take a look at them and you'll see. Um, move, ref, string, um, um, iterators, algorithms. So these are all the things we are going to learn. These are all listed over here. There is no need for me to go through it. Please read these. Um, string library is an important thing. Uh, so the, you, know, you all know what string is. String is essentially uh, an answer to uh, C strings being problematic. So string uh, class is um, um, an encapsulation of C string with functionalities added to it. So it treats a, uh, a C string as one entity, as one variable that you can set it. So major operations that you need, like concatenations, adding stuff, like index operators, things are overloaded so you can actually um, uh, work with it for every sing single string that you have and you pass a new string with uh, information dedicated to it will get generated. So each string object when it contains a C string and you pass it by value to another C string, what happens is that it actually uh, holds all the, uh, recreates, it has, it has a rule of five set for it, okay? So uh, because of that, after C++17, a lightweighted string was created called string view. So string view is essentially a string that doesn't hold its own data. It uses a data of that, that is outside of it. And therefore, you need to make sure that you take care of it if, uh, uh, if uh, you are uh, responsible for its allocation and deallocation. So a string view essentially ha has a view of, uh, of a string without holding the data and managing it its, its own data. Um, Several different types of string classes are there, depending on what type of uh, character system you are working. Old character system, ASCII, or uh, the white characters, ones that are uh, holding an integer, 16 uh, uh, bit or 32 bit character settings, uh, depending on what type of uh, um, character settings you are using, you can use the string accordingly. These uh, um, Public member functions and operators are overloaded for the, for the string. Operator equal, index size, substring that finds a string, finding a character within a string, um, last occurrence of something, first occurrence of something, so you can uh, find uh, uh, where characters are within your string, um, plus equal to concatenate and add something to a string, uh, the equality to see if the contents of the two strings are the same. Um, the extraction and insertion operator for C in and C out are overloaded. So essentially I stream and O stream, no C in and no string and they have uh, operator, uh, insert, uh, left shift and right shift operator uh, overloaded as uh, um, insertion and extraction operator. So it can read it from uh, console and write it into console. and. Um, uh, probably you have already used it in many things right now in a, in a, in a workshop, so you know what they are. So please uh, go through them. String view module, the same thing that I mentioned. It's just uh, uh, um, it, it gives you a read-only view to a, uh, to a series of characters that you have in a string. So um, you have to uh, make sure you maintain the values yourself. So. Um, uh, it's a lightweight uh, type of a string. 
standard template library, we are going to talk about it. It's just telling you that so we're going to talk about containers, iterators, uh, functions, objects we already talked about. Um, but we're going to go through all these things and you'll see. Uh, so all these things that you, uh, the, the standard template library are essentially all the algorithms, data structures, uh, and uh, important processes that are supposed to be, it used to be done uh, by different people individually and kept as a toolbox carried around by themselves, they actually added it. I always make fun of it and I say, and I probably said it over here, and they say there was this ad for Apple, you want this, there's an app for that. It's the same thing over here. Anything you want to do in C++, there is a template for it, okay? And standard template library has all those things that you want. We're gonna go through all these things. So standard template library, we're gonna go through them. Understand what, is, what does it mean, containers, uh, uh, iterators, algorithms, and function objects, we're gonna go through them. Uh, ref move. Uh, Again, please go through all these. These are nothing that I can explain. Uh, you have to just read this and uh, know that they exist. And if you ever need to use it, please uh, um, uh, study about it. Let me see what else do we have over here that is important to talk about. Explaining these things are not possible because you don't have the knowledge for it. So all the things that you see in here, as soon as we hit this, the topic for it, I'll explain exactly what it is. Right now it's nonsense if I want to explain these things to you. So we're gonna go to the first one that actually goes through all these things that are containers and iterators to understand what they are. So containers are um, essentially um, um, Containers in C++ are essentially a, a data structure set to um, hold for storage and retrieval of data in memory based on how you want to deal with it. When we talk about storage and retrieval, we have um, many different uh, basic types of, of, uh, of data structure that work on, on these type of things. So, um, let me just explain this. Are we blank? Yes. Yeah, so, also, oh, I have to first. I have to screen up. Then I have to go blank screen. All right. So, let me get a marker. We have different types of, <clears throat> we have different types of, uh, let me just, I want to know where are my boundaries so I don't go out of it. Okay, so we have to, to store the data and store it in memory and retrieve it. The very basic thing that we learned was were arrays, right? So when we talked about arrays, it was like a contiguous uh, uh, series of stuff in memory and we had, we had them set like this. So because they are all back to back in memory and going, so and it has a beginning and an end, and obviously it has uh, separated elements in them. And we have some kind of a reference or pointer somewhere, so, somewhere else in memory that holds the address of the beginning of these things. So, so what happens over here is that with such thing, uh, retrieval, ret storage and retrieval of data, um, becomes kind of um, uh, fast in one aspect, very slow in another aspect. If you do not want to change the size of the memory, 
this is the fastest way to actually gain access to something. The reason is that because it's holding the address of the beginning, jumping to specific type of element is just a matter of calculation in the address of what you have. So if you, if you want to reach to certain thing, you simply calculate you, the fifth element, you simply see what is the size, multiply by five, whoop, you're there in a, uh, in a uh, momentarily, like a split second you're there. And so you can store, you can retrieve, you can search, you can do all these stuff. So in that manner, these are pretty fast. But if you want to resize the whole thing, then it becomes very difficult. Because the, like, if I actually want to make this even one size bigger, one element bigger than what it was, we have done dynamic memory allocation. We know that to do that, I have to have another one that is one size bigger or one size smaller. Then I have to copy everything from top to bottom and go to the end. Then I have to delete that one and update this one. And for every single resizing of memory, I have to keep doing that over and over. Therefore, extremely slow in that manner. So if you know what is the size of the data that you have and you don't have much of resizing, this is ideal. If you can actually even check the size of, like different size of files are coming, but you can actually see what the size is. Dynamically allocate the piece and done. This is the best way to go through it, fastest way to be able to deal with it. So, it doesn't look cool. It's pretty simply, very simply designed, but uh, with simplicity comes speed and uh, ease of use. <clears throat> and then come other types of <sighs> memory management. We call them linked lists. So linked lists are essentially <coughs> uh, are arrays that elements are spread all over the place. And each element is aware where the next element is. <clears throat> Depending on how to access all these things, the names are different. Okay. Now I'm not going to bore you to go through names and I'll tell you this is called this, called this, that's called that. I'm just going to give you a taste of it so you can see what is what. So when we are actually choosing, and all these things are implemented, you already have them. The first one that I did is called an array. So it's an array template. So if you create from standard library an array, that's what's going to get created for you. It's fixed size, it's quick, it's going to use, you can use a template to create an array of anything. Okay? So um, other things that you can actually create and use are linked lists. Now, linked lists are done, for example, stack. I already wrote a stack for you, right, in class, I think. What was the stack? A uh, stack was a series of linked lists. When I do like this, you know, these could be anywhere. So, in reality, in reality, this is what we have. So, oh, goes here, this one goes here, this one goes here, this one goes here, this one goes now. But I don't want to draw it like this. Understand that each node can be anywhere in memory and because each one is pointing to another, it's very simple to go through. Could you please point at that gentleman with, with your finger? Point at that gentleman. You don't need to stand. Just sit. Okay. okay. Point at that gentleman. Could you please point at that gentleman? Could you please point at that lady? And lady, could you please point that point at that gentleman? And I am pointing. So I am the head of the list right now. And we all know, we, and if, if you look at me, can you tell me how many people are in the list? No, you have to actually count. One, actually I don't know, one. Two, so actually, yeah, one, two, three, four, and five. And that gentleman is pointing to the ceiling at the end, so I know there is nobody after him, or he's not pointing anywhere. <laughs> so he's the one who's pointing to now. This is a linked list. We are everywhere in class. Thank you. 
But in an array, this is an array now. An array of four students. If I want a third one, that's the lady. And when I look at it, I know there are four. Because they are back to back in memory, I know exactly how much, how many seats are dedicated. I, I have dedicated to this, there was four table, and therefore, we, we understand that, right? Now, uh, people who are actually listening to this recording, I'm sorry because it was pretty visual and I couldn't do it, so. But as we actually did this with students, right? So when I actually draw it orderly and nice on the screen, it, on the board, it doesn't mean that they are ordered in memory. They could be anywhere. I just draw it that way so we can understand. Are we clear about that? So saying something like, doing something like that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create the node. So that, OK? So this is essentially a linked list. Now, how to look at it makes the name different. OK? For example, if I actually do something like this, so this becomes a stack, and I call this one top, then this becomes a stack, which means a stack is only ever of the last one that is entered, and any new item that is added to this one will always be on top. and therefore it points to the next one. That was a stack. Are we okay with this? And if I want to know what the depth of the stack is, I have to keep going to next until I hit the wall. One, two, three, four nodes I have. So each node of a container is essentially an element of the container. Are we okay with this? All right. Now, if I call this one head, then it could be a regular linked list. So with at just one pointing to the, to the head, and I would say every time you want to add something to it, I'm going to find out where the end of the story is, so what probably I could have another one over here called tail. Let me just make that bigger. So, so it's the same one. This one is head, and this one is tail. Head is pointing to the head of the link list, and tail is always updated to the last one. Doing something like that, what I cre what can create is called a queue. It's Tim Horton's lineup. So when you add something to this, when you add something to this, it's added to the end of the list. And when it's popped out, it comes out from that. So this actually gets extracted out, and it points to the next one, and it's deleted. The first one, the stack that we created, was last in, first out, or first in, last out, whatever you call it, OK? This one, first in, first out, right? The first one that is inserted is the first one that is going to get served. With stacks are reverse. As I always mentioned, like when you have plates in a kitchen, if you have 12 kitchens and you're only two of you in that living over there and you clean your dishes regularly, probably you've never used the 12th. Uh, plate in the thing because you never get back there, back down there, right? Unless you have a party or something in occasions. Okay, so it's something like that. Now, obviously, if I look at them, let me clean this up. I told you it's boring. I already see three people are sleeping, but hey, I have to explain this. There's no, no way that I can actually uh, go through this tool to clear everything up for you. So, I just, again, I don't want the implementation for this. I want you to just understand which one is what and why. One is good and the other one is bad. So this one is head and this one is tail. Okay? So if I want 
element after this one, I can go over here, correct? But if I want the previous element, what can I do? Can I go to the previous one? No. I have to go to the beginning, keep going until I see the next of the one I'm reading is me. Then I have to stop to see what's the previous one. So going back and forth is not as easy. This is a single link list. It's not doubly linked. It's singlet. It goes one direction. To fix this problem and they create another one, they do it like this. So they say, okay, I'm going to create a previous one that points to the previous one to, to make it faster going back and forth. Now it's a double linked list. I can go back and forth because each node, and you know all these things are data, right? So these are all the data that you have. So to go to the previous one, you can, I can go to previous, I can go to next. But still, if I, if I have 50,000 elements in this container and I want to go to 40,000th, I have to start from the beginning and count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and keep going like that. Now to make this thing work quicker, sometimes they add stuff to it. So, so they actually call another, create another pointer called current. It's the one you're dealing with now that points to the one that you're dealing with now, for example. So you can say, go next, go previous, so it remembers at which location you're dealing with. You may have a link list that doesn't have a head and tail at all. All it has is current. So if you want to want to go to head, you have to keep going back until you hit the wall. To want to front, to go to front, you have to go end to hit the wall. So these are different types of linked lists that you have. And obviously, you know that these type of linked lists can ex get expanded very easily. If I want to insert something in the middle, I don't have to resize the whole thing. All I need to do, all I need to do is to create a node over here, make it point to next and previous, and update the next and previous of the other one. And then it's going to fit in the row. Very simple. Okay, again, implementation is not important. We just want to know about this. Are we okay? So, yeah. Obviously, we have things that we are not going to talk about, I think, this semester. There are other structures that are much uh, more sophisticated called trees. Um, so these are linked lists, one-dimensional linked lists, linked lists that you have. With trees, this is what you have. Like, for example, this could be a, what we call a binary tree. A binary tree has a root, and the root holds the address of the first node. And each node points to another node, and each node, so they, these are actually called right and left and it points to another one and it goes like that. So, and it grows like that. These type of lists are extremely quick in searching because when you create them, you can have them balanced. We don't want to go through it. But again, this is another one. So this is what we call a tree. Now trees could be binary like this or we could have a tree that is not binary, but each one of them has a data and many different nodes that they can go to, like that. So each one can point to many different nodes, and there's a data. So a branch can go to many different ones, crazy ones. So we can have stuff like this. Uh, and also, we have another one that's called a graph, which is essentially That's Google map, by the way, okay? So, so to actually point to what you want to do, it's, it, it's in what we call in a graph. I don't want to go again to the, to the description. So these last two that I talked about, trees, binary trees, and, and graphs, and things like that, we don't want to talk about. All we need to talk about is the containers that we are uh, dealing with right now. So many of the things that you know may have these type of implementations underneath to make things do search quicker and insertion easier. The whole, the important note over here is that 
standard template library allows you to use such beautifully designed data structure accessible to you where you in fact have no knowledge of how it's implemented. You just know that it's fast and quick and can be used. As long as you learn what the functionalities of each one is and how you can use them, you can pick the one just by reading it, that what are the weaknesses and strengths of the container, you can pick the one that is suitable for your application and that's gonna help you do whatever you are doing. Are we good with this? All right. creator of C++ says, by default, use a vector when you need a container. Okay? What is a vector? What's an array? We're going to go through them one by one so you'll see. So, we have array. Uh, array, so the, mm, let me just Oh, um, first let me show you the implementation and ask you to please go through uh, uh, these things at home um, before we actually go through the containers. Look at the implementation, see how they work. Um, again, I created these a long time ago. I think the first time that I was teaching it and I, and I keep reusing it. Um, Not this PC, uh, three, four, five. So the stack that I created long time ago, this is, says Visual Studio 2019, well, oh, whatever, doesn't matter, okay? This is the uh, uh, template version of it. So um, this stack, as you see right now, it actually creates uh, uh, last in, first out type of a thing, or first in, last out type, type of a thing. We talked about it. The only uh, thing that I want to attract your attention to is that the node of the class is fully private. There is no access to anything because the node is, is, is uh, owned by stack itself, and all the stack has is a top pointer that is pointing to the top node. That's all. Okay, and it has two methods. One is push, where it pushes the information into the top of the stack. So this is essentially what it looks like. So this is essentially what it looks like. You have, uh, you have a stack that is empty. You push the first one in. Then you push the next one over it. Then you push the next one over it then you push the next one over it. Now, if you want to pull, you, you, there's no way that you pull anything down here. You have to put, pull the top one, and then pull, and then pull, and then pull, and the next pull won't work because it's empty, right? So that's how it works. Now, I already did this stack, so you know exactly what it is, and that's the, implementation for it. It overloads a boolean that it returns true if uh, it is not empty, it returns false if it's not, and uh, the main program running it, uh, so I created an employee with rule of five. Please take a look at it. It's a good example to take a look at it. You already uh, uh, know all these things. Uh, and this is how it shows. So I can have a stack of double, and I'm going to say D push this, push that, push that. 
and as, as I pop, everything's gonna get popped in reverse. And now I'm pushing series of employees. And when I pop them, they pop in reverse order. So Larry, Carr, Flank, Homer. And when I pop them, they pop in reverse. So this push and pop essentially create nodes and pulls them in reverse order, okay? So that's the stack, and the stack over here is already template, templated because I created a regular one for you already, so there is no need to, to go through this. But what uh, is going to be interesting for you to look at, and I uh, really appreciate if you can do it, because um, it kind of gives you a, first of all, you walk through what, what I'm going to show you. You're going to have no problem with pointers anymore, okay? And and convert that to a template, and then you're gonna be, I hope that I didn't put the template one over here. Let me see if it's a template. So this one is a, this one is a queue. Let me see what type of queue it is. It is a queue of doubles, okay? Double values, all right? And as you see, each node has a data and a next and a previous. And again, it's fully private with a constructor that sets the values of data, previous, and, and whatever, okay? So that's that, okay? And uh, it's a friend of Q, obviously, because Q is the one who's supposed to create the Q node. All right? And it has a head and a tail and a size. Okay? And series of things. So you can create an empty queue. You can create a queue with size. You can, and this is, I created it exactly like the queue that we have in a standard template library. So the functions you see over here are the functions we have in a standard template library. So you can actually create it with a size and set all the data at the same time to series of things. You can have a copy constructor, you can have a move constructor and a destructor. You have an assignment operator, move assignment to set one queue to another. You can see what is its size. You can see if it's empty. You can treat it as an array, so you can actually go to certain index and uh, treat this queue like an array with index operator. And obviously, it has two different types of index operator, one const, the other one not constant, so you can actually use it in different places. You can see what is at front. You can see what is at back. You can push elements to the back. You can push elements to the front. You can pop elements from the back pop elements from the front. So this queue, if you want, can be treated like a stack if you only push and pop up front. And that's usually what all the containers are. So you will see many, like, it, is it wise if I want a stack to use a queue? No, because it has lots of extra bells and whistles and Efficiency, just take a look at the whole thing in here. Should I use all these things when I just can have something that has three uh, little things, three little uh, methods in it? So again, choose properly. And yeah, that serial shows the serial. So just somebody asked in that thing that can we see how many queues we have actually? So that's kind of a serial number of the queue. So how many queues you create? It's a static integer that gets added every single time a queue is added so you will know how many queues you have. So convert this to a template, and you're gonna be my hero, okay? And the code for it is all over here. That's the whole thing, okay? So exactly how it's done, how every single thing is uh, uh, implemented. Please, please, please convert this to a template, okay? Um, I cannot say if there is any question because you have no idea how it works. <laughs> All of you have is a question. So please go through them and see how it works. And um, um, have you seen those um, big uh, uh, pens that has four colors on it, like side by side? That teaches you this, which means have one of those and a big piece of paper and walk through it drawing with that in colors. 
every single node that gets created, draw it on a paper, walk through it, then everything goes crystal clear. If you just read it, it's not going to work out. Please do that. Okay? Uh, where do you post this uh, code? Pardon me? Where do you post this code? Like, where can we access these files? Oh. It's the usual place. That was a strange question, my friend. <laughs> OP345 NCC notes and October 12th. I haven't put those things in yet, but yeah, this is what you're going to see, where you're going to see. Okay. All right. Oh, I, I, was, I was having it on another screen, and I thought I'm actually showing it to you. So. So you go to the 345 organization on notes, October 12th, everything's going to be there. This is the initial one, but just to make sure that uh, we have it handy. Uh, anyways, I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm going to uh, commit it. Um, actually, give me a second. Uh, usually we have something that says open file folder. There you go. So so Q stack and Q stack template and Q. There you go. They're all up there, so. If you go over here, here they are. Yes, go ahead. Hmm? Uh, I'll, I have started already. Some of you have received feedbacks from me, but um, uh, you're gonna. So this is uh, like um, I, I think I thought to OP two four four. I forgot to mention to you guys. So you're gonna receive feedbacks from me for the first workshops that you submitted down to this point. Um, for those, if you didn't make any major mistakes, you're not gonna lose mark on it. But as soon as I, you get the feedback from me, the next one you can not repeat what, you, what I said. So you're going to receive feedbacks from me on every single one. If you just see your mark, it means there is nothing important to tell. Okay? All right. Have a beautiful day. All right. So... Any questions down to this point before we actually start with the first um, with the first uh, container example? Anything? All right. So the list of containers, what they are, let me just show you. So this is actually an STL vector that I'm using. And the list of all the, all the containers are here. As you see, array, vector, queue, forward list, and list. And it shows that array is, is just like a, an, an array that you have in C, but it has a wrapper around it that treats it like an array. So there is nothing uh, fancy about it. It's fixed size. You can't do anything with it. A vector is an array that can be expanded with size. Of course, resizing a vector is time consuming because it's contiguous memory, but it is extremely quick in all the things that you want to. So when you don't know what to use, use a vector. Okay? When you don't know what you want to use, use a vector. Again, everything's listed over here. These are all the methods. Please check it out and see how it works. I'll give you some examples for it. Uh, DQ is the queue that I created with head and tail that you can actually add to the back and up front. 
not only back, so it, when you add something, it adds to both sides, so you can, so it gets filled, and then you can add uh, stuff to back and, uh, uh, um, um, and front of the queue. Um, they call it doubly ended queue because it has access to head and the tail. It doesn't have to go next, 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 next to get to the end. It doesn't have to go back, 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 back previous to get to the head. It knows where the head and tails are. Quickly, you can add stuff to the head and the tail. So these are, this is very quick with adding to the beginning at the end of the queue. Um, a list is created with a doubly linked list where it had back and forth. Uh, if you recall that I created each node has. So traversing into it is quicker, um, but it's the same thing again. Um, and container adapters when you're calling, so essentially stack, queue, these are data structure standard stuff that we read in data structure books. Uh, stack is a stack that, uh, uh, you know, I, I explain. Um, a queue is uh, uh, first in, last out, you know that. Uh, a priority queue, or last in, first out, whatever. <laughs> um, oh, sorry, last, first in, first out. Um, and uh, the priority queue, the, the only difference with priority queue is that it uh, checks to see where uh, the element's value fit in the queue. Um, a perfect example for a priority queue is when all of you are printing on a printer in the lab. Let's say five of you are printing your stuff in the lab. So your jobs are waiting to be get printed on the printer, correct? And then the system administrator prints something. So system administrator's work is going to get printed on a printer too, but because it has higher priority to everyone else, it's going to come to the head of the queue. Okay? And if we have different levels of uh, 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 priority, then uh, the insertion happens in the middle of the queue if needed. So essentially, the queue is built sorted based on the priority that you define. Okay? So the first element is always the biggest one, and the last element is the smallest one. Big and small is what you define. You can have, you know, overload uh, being bigger or smaller to whatever meaning you have. We know C++. We know how it works. So when you define big, the big could be uh, if the salary is higher, highest, if uh, the uh, the square meter area is the biggest. Depending on what you have, what you define, it's going to get created that way. So, as you see vector, to create a vector, it's a template. You say vector of double, as you see over here. And uh, you can see if it's empty or not with an empty method. You can push back, which is essentially adds to the back of the vector. Uh, you can actually, uh, yeah, push back to the back of the ve vector. Um, you can access it using the uh, index. The index for a vector is extremely quick because it's a contiguous memory, so it goes to the place that you want to actually go. Um, um, you can see what is in front. You can pop stuff from the back. So it, it works like this. It's, it, the, the, the functionalities are there. There's nothing for me to explain. You have to write the code and see what it is. So if I run the program, you will see that Oh, it's going to run the stack because that's my, I'm going to set the, set a startup project. Yeah, so when I run the program, obviously I included vector, so it creates a vector of doubles, and it's going to be 10,000 doubles in there. Now, that's very important for you to see how many things you want with the vector. Because vectors are contiguous, be careful. Changing its size is time consuming. Okay? Now you know what's behind the scene. So it's time consuming. Try to find out how many you have. But of course, if you want to change it, the capabilities are there. 
there is no problem. It will actually change based on what you want. So now I push back and I can see what the size is and I can go up to the size that I have and I print it like, what happened? Something is wrong in here, stop. Something is wrong in here. This should actually work. Huh. No. Oh, sorry. Prices. That shouldn't. That should work. We have run this many, many times. It is actually out of the notes, I think. I want to see if I, yeah, something's happening that is fishy in here. Yeah, I put it, I put it for 10,000 over there and I don't know why, why did I do that? Because it's pushed back, it shows 10,000, it goes to the end, so I'll make it, let me make it smaller, <laughs> eight. I think I was explaining it to a student and I made it 10,000 and it's, <laughs> And it went 10,000. Okay, so, so now I have eight of them. And there we go. So it goes from here to there. Now I can actually uh, set the front to something. So it actually sets the front to the value that I have. And I can pop the last one. And again, show it. So the size is going to get reduced. And that's how it's going to work out. So um, yeah, that's vector. Pardon me? I say I put initially empty, it's not empty. I was giving an exam. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, if I take the eight out, then it's not it's gonna be empty, but I make it eight. I wanted to give an example for it. So if I do it just like this, then it's gonna be initially empty. This is what's gonna look like. But let me just put them both. So better to set to the size you want. Okay? So Again, because it's initially empty, it's pushing back one by one, you know what's going to happen. Every single time it's going to resize it, and we don't want it. Anyways, save, and that's that. So that's the vector. The next one is DQ, and you will see that it is almost the same because they are all containers. They all have the exact same method. So DQ, I have prices and costs, whatever that I have. Now, take a look at this. Um, it's, everything is exactly the same as you see. I, am, I can push back, push front because it's a DQ, but the functionalities are the same. But remember, the difference is now that now you don't have the same uh, structure that, that, that you had as a vector. Now you have a, a queue. And because it's a queue, uh, the way it's created is not contiguous. And you know, you know what's, what happens. Yep. So um, same thing. So now, as you see, I only have one thing over there. So uh, when, when you do, so I popped front, the front one is done. I set the back one to whatever. So it, uh, uh, first initially it had three and each of them was 10 or 1050. 
But let me just print this before that so you see. Stop. So when you write like that, if you say I want three and initializes each of them to that thing and cost obviously is empty, now I can actually set the back to whatever I want, pop the front, and then um, the values are changed like that. I should have put a C out and L. We're going to run it later. It doesn't matter. Okay, and uh, push front and push back, they both work. It does not make any difference for DQ. You can do it because it's uh, doubly ended. You can ha add it to front two, and that's what happens. All right? Um, that's the difference between the, um, the, the vector and the DQ. Quite frankly, um, Um, vector is 90% of the things that you're going to use. You'll see. Um, it's very handy, very quick, and uh, literally replaces all the, all the arrays that you've ever used. Okay? Any time that you want to use an array, use a vector comfortably. It's the same, faster, better, and uh, um, less problem. So the stack we actually created, this is the standard template library stack. So the um, stack we created, um, you saw the code. This is the STL version of it, okay? Which is essentially creating a stack of doubles, and then you push, you, you see what is on top. Uh, you can uh, um, pop and, and uh, print the top every single time. So every time you're popping, the values are going to um, be displayed in reverse order. By default, you are not supposed to... Uh, like, the, 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 you will see that in, uh, in that data structure books, different programmers design it in a different way. There are, there are methods called visit. So if you ever see something like that, visit essentially shows you what the top is. But uh, in, in stack, top is essentially the function, standard function, visit, where you see what is on top without popping it out. And these are... Uh, um, examples for stack. What else we have to talk about over here? Regular queue. This is the one that I ask you to uh, convert. Okay, so same thing. With Q, you can push and pop too. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, the only difference is that with Q, you can treat it the other way, which means you can actually uh, take a look at the back too. Okay. We just want to see if it compiles or not, so you have something to run. Right. Oh, important. <clears throat> All right. So something that is very important to see, iterators. What iterators are? So if you create an array of integers and you create a pointer that points to the first element, when you do plus plus to that pointer, it's going to point to the second element, right? and the third and the fourth. So with, a, with a, a pointer, you can traverse through the elements of the array. They simulated that using a class called iterator that can get instantiated using the container itself. So you cannot create an iterator. Why? Because when we are dealing with, let's say, an array of doubles, and you create a double pointer, if you add one to a double pointer, what's going to be added to it? Eight, because size of a double is eight. When you have an integer pointer, when you add one to an integer, what's going to be added to it? Four, because it, size of an int is four. Okay? With iterators, because it's a class and not uh, 
a primitive value, they only allow iterators to get created by the container. So each container creates its own iterator and therefore it can point to its own. You cannot create an iterator uh, just by, uh, a, a created an iterator cannot be created by itself. It has to get created by the uh, container itself. Now take a look at this. So the vector that we had Take a look at here. So the begin actually gives you an iterator, okay? So you can create, as you see in here, I'm saying standard vector double, then I'm gonna say iterator of a double vector i. So i becomes an iterator for an element of a double vector. If I want an iterator for a uh, a vector of employees, I have to create a separate one just for that. So the iterator of that can only go through stacks of double. That's all, okay, can point. And what you do, begin returns essentially the, the, uh, the, the iterator to the first element of the vector. So what you can do, you can, and the plus plus operator is overloaded for it. So when you do plus plus, it actually goes to the next one. And the asterisk the same. So when you say target of, it looks exactly like uh, uh, a pointer. But it's not a pointer, it's an iterator. So when you say target of i, it actually shows that element that is pointing. And as you do plus plus, it iterates through the elements of the vector and you can go back and forth through it. So this is exactly the iterator version of that. Now, the good thing is that because we have that auto thingy, we have the auto statement, because we have the auto statement, we can actually do this. We don't need to actually create the iterator separately as we did over here. What I can do is just to remove this and say in here, auto i prices yada yada. Because begin is returning the iterator, it not only creates i, but only creates it of type of the iterator of the vector prices. Are we good? And then it does the exact same thing, so the, the outcome is the same. So that iterator can be used for any type of container that you have to go through them. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, and the, this is another example for it. Uh, let me just uh, bring the files in. Again, boring class because there is no, nothing to teach. It's, uh, uh, you know, I'm just telling you what do we have in C++ and if there is no concept to teach or anything like that. Yes, yeah. So I'm gonna bring up, uh, give me a second. So what do I want to do over here? Uh, I did, this is the, yeah. No, no, see the E, so this is gonna be auto. Okay, next thing. Why it keeps going to OP244? Doesn't like me teach 345. Okay. Uh, so, so I have an employee again. The employee is, as I mentioned, with all the things that it has with uh, uh, move operator and everything that but with move uh, rule of five applied for it. And now take a look at it. So now I can create a list of employees and create an iterator for it 
and do the exact same thing to do with employees. And now this I that starts from beginning and goes to going to the end will actually point to every single employee. So in here I can say erase E plus plus begin. So essentially I'm gonna erase, I'm gonna be, be I'm gonna be erasing the second element of the employees, removing it out of the list. Okay? Um, so Iterators even work with, I'll show it to you later, because um, um, yeah. you can even use it with files and stuff, but we'll go through it. Well, I'll, I'll explain, so there are some cool stuff that you can do when we get to it, um, I'll explain. Anyway, so, so um, employee, so I'm adding these, uh, uh, and, and then I'm gonna go, so let me just show this right now. And again, please go through the notes and write little testers for yourself to see how these things work. So I'm pushing these three in, displaying them. Then I'm going one behind the end and insert Homer Simpson, displaying them again. and show after erase, and good. All right, so let's walk through. So as you see, the three are added, and I'll go one by one through them, and I have the three over here. Then I'll go one behind the end, one before the end, and I insert Homer Simpson over there, and I show you now Homer Simpson is there. Okay, now I'm gonna go from the beginning to the end, and I, uh, oh yeah. And now I'm gonna delete one after first one, erase it. What happened? Oh, because I, yeah. So now as you see, that one is gone. So with list, um, it's literally a double link list that you can take stuff halfway through and, and uh, but, but again, uh, very expensive in storage, in, in, uh, in retrieval. Storage is cool, it's nice, you can store stuff, it doesn't do much, but when you are actually want to go see the, I don't know, a thousandth employee, then um, you gotta be careful. So that's that, save. And that's that. That's all about containers and everything we needed to talk about today. Um, let me just see if there is anything in here to mention. Iterators, starting removing this, EQ. Yep, that's it. So. I think that's it. Any questions? So please, I know the next, uh, uh, we're gonna see each other online. Uh, we're gonna see each other online next time. I beg you to please go do these things and come with questions, right? Um, let me see what is our plan for the next week. Are we teaching anything? I don't think we are teaching anything next week. Yeah, the algorithms and stuff goes after the break, right? Yeah, so please go uh, test this yourself and come with questions the next day you're coming in. So next day online, come with questions. We have nothing to go through. Uh, come with questions uh, and let me know what do you want me to go through again and then we're gonna have our uh, midterm test. Yeah, that's it. Have yourself a beautiful day.
and I'm gonna uh, run to the next class.